Amen. Um, we've been speaking on discerning the will of God. And I'm going to bring it into a subject I have told you has not been very comfortable for me over the years. But I think that I want to speak about it because uh, during the week there was a video circulating about uh, tithing by Creflo Dollar. And I listened to a part of the video and he was talking about the fact that he has been wrong all these years. And that all those who have his books and tapes on tithing should throw them away. And so this argument has been going on for a couple of years. Some preachers in Nigeria and different people who say there is no need for us to tithe. There is need for us to tithe. And the argument rages on. But God is not a God of confusion. And it's never my will to bash any minister of God. Hallelujah. And um, somebody had made a statement that um, if he was wrong in this matter, then how many things uh, of what he preaches are not wrong? And I found that... Um, quite amazing because we, we, we grow in revelation knowledge. Where I was 10 years ago is not where I am today. And there are things that I may have preached, I will not preach them again because you come to the realization that you only know in part your knowledge is limited until God adds on to it. So Bible talks about Precept upon precept, line upon line. So if you ever come to the place where you think that you know it all and that you've acquired the fullness of knowledge, I feel sorry for you. Hallelujah. Because I know I do make mistakes. Even the great prophet Samuel would have chosen the wrong king, but for God. Amen. So at the end of it, but for God. And when he corrects us, we must be humble enough to say we were wrong. I get where Creflo was coming from. And so this morning, our topic is going to be wealth and abundance in the kingdom of God. Wealth and abundance in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And somebody said, the first spiritual law of wealth and abundance is the law of absolute surrender. So I'm linking it with last week. That until you are in the place of total surrender to God, this subject will not really benefit you. Hallelujah. And so we want to learn this morning. I'm in a a learning process. Hallelujah. My heart has been troubled a lot of times by the way people bring out this prosperity gospel and the way people talk about money. Some as if that is the only subject. I remember many years ago, there was a man of God called Bob Tilton. And he would talk until, you know, saliva is on there. I mean, just be talking. I mean, his whole message is, Money, 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 money. And that's unfortunate because that's not the only subject in the Bible. The Bible says, let us rightly divide the word of truth. We need to take the whole counsel of God. Hallelujah. So please join me on this journey. Hallelujah. Job chapter number 22 from verse number 21. Job 22, verse number 21 to 29. Let's read the word of God together. 
It says, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. So your knowledge of God is key. As we learned from Daniel 11.32, they that know their God. Do you know your God? Do you have a personal encounter with him? Do you have a personal relationship? I'm not saying do you do church things. Are you involved in church rituals? That's not what I'm talking about. Do you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God? Acquaint now thyself with him. Get to know him. And you'll be at peace. And thereby good shall come unto thee. Because God is good all the time. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. That means that if you are going to make his acquaintance, you must come to the place where you accept his principles. You accept his operational systems. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Return. Return. Hallelujah. Re. When you see re, it means that again. Come on. Hallelujah. So return to the Lord. Many times we have to return to the Lord. I don't know about you. But when you find your faults and your mistakes, you return to the Lord. Hallelujah. Then, then alone, after those things, acquainting yourself with God, laying his law, you know, receiving his law, laying his words to your heart, returning to the Almighty taking iniquity from your tabernacles, then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stones of the brick. So there are systems of prospering in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. There are systems of prospering then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto him. I'm just looking at the image of a child looking up to their parent. Then will you lift up your face because it's lifting up in gratitude. It's you again, Lord. I thank you. Hallelujah. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows. And thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down as it is today, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up. And he shall save the humble person. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. I said, when you read the word, look out for the principles, the promises, and the prophecies. Hallelujah. The principles, the promises, the prophecies. This is the word of God. So you see, when we just say, give and it shall be given to you. It, it, it's not just one simple thing. It's a, a lot of things working together to bring to pass. Hallelujah. And most important is the state of your heart. 
You don't hear that much in the preaching of prosperity. That the condition of your heart is what makes a difference. Hallelujah. And so let's quickly read Proverbs 23 verse 26. Money can destroy you. So your heart must be in the right place. Can I say that again? Money can destroy you. So your heart must be in the right place. The Bible says the heart can be desperately wicked. Hallelujah. Who can know it? So until God vets your heart, he's often not ready to do business with you. Because it's your heart condition. Amen. So it says, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Your heart. Give me your heart. Amen. Amen. Some just like to just throw money at church. Oh, I bought the chairs. Oh, I did this and I did that. And their hearts are far away from God. And unfortunately, as ministers, we don't correct because we love that they bring their resources and yet we may not be concerned about the condition of the heart of the people. Hallelujah. Let's look at something in 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 5. Give me your heart. Give me your heart, says God. Give me your heart. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse number 5. Talking about the Macedonian Christians. And this they did. They are talking about their giving. Not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Paul was describing the Macedonian Christians that in their giving, they first gave themselves to the Lord. Beloved, I can't say it enough. Your heart condition is what is important to God. Hallelujah. They first gave themselves to God and then unto us by the will of God. This is the will of God. This is the will of God about wealth, about abundance. The state of your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of our giving doesn't yield much because our heart is not totally surrendered to God. Some of us just do it out of obligation, out of guilt, out of, you know, and a lot of teaching in the church about wealth and abundance is from the secular world and does not focus on this fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, pride can easily grip your heart when money comes. A lot of people's heart size have changed because their head size have grown bigger because of money. Amen? When your heart belongs to him, God can trust you with anything. Praise God. Let's look at Matthew 6.24. A scripture we all know. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve God. Beloved, they are both demanding your attention. Let's be honest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If somebody comes to tell you, oh, I'll pay you, uh, I know they do one time and a half. But maybe they'll do three times and a half. This church may be empty. 
And we'll just say, oh, God knows <laughs> that I need the money. And he has created the opportunity. So I must take hold. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. So your heart is attached to money. We don't like to admit it, but as Pat Thomas sang, Sikaya Moja, money is blood. It's your life. Hallelujah. Even when you don't feel like getting up to go and work because of the money, you will go. Even if your boss is annoying you. Hallelujah. And this was the folly of Solomon. He reached the point where he didn't deny himself anything his eyes saw and desired. He had so much wealth, it's like, I can do whatever. The Elon Musk's of the world. Jeff Bezos is of the world. Bill Gates of the world. Hallelujah. He said, I did not deny myself anything. And his conclusion was that all is vanity of vanities. Hallelujah. And so I ask you this morning, can you cast your crown? As the CFO, Chief Financial Officer, as the pastor, it's just so amazing sometimes to watch from the pulpit who will preach about giving and tithing and there are pastors who don't give. They will watch the congregation give, but they don't give. No one is above the word of God. Hallelujah. And this morning, we're just going to look at a few things about this issue of tithing. Go with me to Leviticus 27 and verse 30. I want you to understand today that tithing is not about the money. Get that in your head. Tithing is not about the money. It says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It is holy unto the Lord. As I began to teach on kingdom, I talked about the fact that God is king and owner of everything. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those that dwell in it all belongs to him. So God is owner. He's the land owner. Amen. We are just stewards. And as I talked last week about colonization, when the, the colonizer comes to colonize a colony, he, he declares himself owner. And therefore, they built railroads in Ghana from the hinterland where our minerals were to the, the, the uh, uh, coastland in order to transport our minerals out. They didn't care about setting up the railroads in other areas as a means of transport as you find in the UK. You can be without a car and comfortably live in the UK because what? The railroad system is excellent. But they didn't do that in the colony. They only built to take out. Hallelujah. And as we were sharing this morning, there are still nations 
and uh, the UK, even though they have their independence, they are called commonwealth countries. Commonwealth. <laughs> Hallelujah. The wealth is common. It's supposed to be shared amongst themselves, but it is not. Hallelujah. And some countries are waking up. Jamaica. We think we want our freedom. We don't want to be in the commonwealth. Canada is still in the commonwealth. So they have a prime minister. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because he's still under the British crown. The tithe. Because in that time, it was more of an agrarian community, agriculture was what featured. And he says, the, the, the tithe of the land, the seed of the land, the fruit of the tree is the Lord's, capital L-O-R-D, Adonai. It is holy unto the Lord. So it's not a matter of New Testament, Old Testament. There are just some things that Belong to God. Hallelujah. But the problem has been that as ministers of the gospel of which I am, many times when tithing is spoken about, we speak about it in manipulative ways, in threatening ways because to a large extent, that is what supports, and go with me to Malachi, Malachi 3, verse number 8. Malachi 3, verse number 8. This is a typical scripture. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offering. Now, if somebody says you've robbed me, it means you've taken... My property. You've taken what belongs to me. And they were not conscious of the fact that they are taking what belongs to God. And God said, so they're asking, how, how have we robbed you? What do you mean by we've robbed you? And he says, in tithes and in offerings. Verse number nine. We're going all the way down. You are cursed with the curse. And this is the particular part. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me even this whole nation. But we know in the, under the new covenant, Christ became a curse for us. He took the curse. Praise the Lord. So I hate it when I hear ministers telling people they are cursed. Because you see, when you come to the new covenant, under the old, it was do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. Under the new covenant, God enables us to obey him. And then he wants you to voluntarily. Because you've come to an understanding, voluntarily to offer to him. Hallelujah. Because it must come from a place of love. A place where the condition of your heart is right. Beloved, I don't care what anybody says. I have an understanding of tithing that, you know, it doesn't bother me. It, it, it does, you know, it's not a struggle. Should I tithe? Should I? No, 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 no. No. I love my God. Hallelujah. And I want to serve him with all my heart and with that which I have. Hallelujah. So this, under the old covenant, he says, you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation. 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, 
If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Hallelujah. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Where is the storehouse? The storehouse is wherever you are getting fed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Where you are being nurtured, where you are being, you, you are growing in the things of God, that is a storehouse. And within that storehouse must be a ministry committed to the salvation of souls as well as the equipping of the saints. Hallelujah. It must be a ministry where the minister, I talk about the ministry committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints. And it must have a minister committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints. Unfortunately, sometimes from the pulpit, the extravagant, lavish lifestyles of some ministers have left people angry, have left people offended, and therefore not willing to obey the word of God. And my mind goes to the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, as the people brought their offerings, their sacrifices to God, the protocol was that God first. And then the ministers who serve can have portions of it. But these two men will stand at the gate before the people could make their offering to God. They have their fox and they plunge it in there and choose what they want and it offended God and offended the people and it's a dangerous place because it brought a, a curse to the house of Eli and God said nobody will grow old in this family Imagine such a case. Hallelujah. They would die in their youth. And when Eli was told, because he was an old man, and he knew that, you know, he had reached the place where he would die, he didn't really care. May the Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. There is a purpose why we give for the running of the house of God. Hallelujah. Warren Buffett's money is not coming to run the church. None of those on the outside are coming. The church is held up by those in the church. So when you don't give, what are you doing to the house of God? And this is the only scripture where God says, prove me, dare me, dare me, prove me. When you have obeyed my word, prove me, says the Lord of hosts. If I will, one, not open the windows of heaven, there will be an open heaven over your life. And when the heavens are open over your life, rain, rain can come into your life. Hallelujah. When the heavens were opened, and another version will tell you, and I'll open the floodgates. When God opened the floodgates in Noah's time, everything was buried. Beloved, blessing will overwhelm you. He says, and pour you out a blessing. This is where some people meet, miss it. Does anything there 
say money. You are bringing your tithes. Hallelujah. But God is not saying that he will necessarily put money in your heart. But he puts blessing in your life. When people are going emergency, 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 you are walking in health. When people are taking their vehicle, going to go and repair, repair. The money you refuse to give to God, Satan will claim it from you. You are suffering and yet you won't change. Things are difficult for you because you refuse to plug into the financial systems of the kingdom. I will pour out blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And some of us know what God is talking about. Blessing is coming from all angles. Hallelujah. I mean, before you ask, God will answer. Hallelujah. He likes, he knows the things you like. And he's able to bring blessing into your life. Don't take the blessing for granted. The psalmist said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Don't forget God's benefits. Hallelujah. It's not because you are a fine girl or a fine boy. God is good to you. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Beloved, there is an entity called devourer. Another version will say waster. That entity will make sure you waste what you have. In Haggai it says, it's like a pocket full of holes. You don't know where your money goes. But when the money comes now, it's gone. And those who tithe, you don't know how you make it. But you make it. You are able to pay your bills. You are able to do the things you have to do. Because after you give to God, you have put his hands upon your Hallelujah. And that's how people will reach out to you in ways you cannot imagine. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Now you know fruit is the end result of having planted. That means that, you know, uh, 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 when things Spoil just at the point of your breakthrough. You can see it, you can smell it, and yet you can never touch it because you are not faithful to God. You see it happening. You see it happening. But yet it never gets to you. It's never your turn. It's never, you know, and yet you know you deserve it, but it's never happening. He says, I will destroy the fruit. I will not destroy the fruit. The outcome of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Failure at the edge of miracles. Says the Lord of hosts. And he uses his battle name. Because this portion, 11, is warfare. The Lord takes on your battles. Hallelujah. Verse number 12. And all nations shall call you blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I tell people I'm 64, going to 64, they don't believe. Because he renews my youth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There were times when I'm getting diarrhea. Because the money is not coming. But you see, God takes you through a process. And if you remain faithful, he will show himself strong. People will see you and call you blessed. Hallelujah. You shall be a delightsome land 
says the Lord of hosts. Amen. And then verse 13. Your words have been stout against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against you? That is when all you are doing is complaining. Complaining. I don't understand why. I'm doing all this. He says, your words have become stout. And listen. Yet you say, what have we so much spoken against thee? Verse 14. Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. I'm serving God and still, I'm giving, and, and you have the audacity to say you are giving to, and you know that you are not giving to God what is his due. And yet you are sitting there, and hey, all this giving, we are giving. There was a sister who used to come to this church, she's moved to another state. And those were the times when it was really tough. We had lost some members. And therefore, our offerings and things had gone down. And so every time we have to come and be talking about money, hey, you people always start, every time you are talking about money, who should I talk to? Hallelujah. If I'm asking you for the money to give to myself, that's another matter altogether. And like my husband says, when it is for the work of God, I am bold to ask for it. Hallelujah. Amen. So by the way, we are asking for contribution. We'll be using these equipments from in quantity. Hallelujah. I have a son who has a heart for the work. You get up, you go and buy microphones. You get up, you go and buy this gadget. We call him Mr. Gadget. Hallelujah. But there is blessing. Because you see, God observes. Amen. Some of you drink coffee free. You have never bought a, 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 a tin of milk. Every day you come, you are drinking free. Other people should give so you come and free. When would you go, when you go to Costco? Oh, I'm buying this uh, pack of water for church. You have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it? That we have kept his ordinances. You say, type, type, give, type, type. What? I mean, what's all this? And that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Liar. You, five years ago, look at yourself today. Hallelujah. He's been good. You can't even count your shoes. Those were the days when you had only black and brown. Today you can wear yellow, blue, red, any color. He's so good. Hallelujah. He's so merciful. <laughs> Verse number 15. Eh? Wash and wear. Wash and wear. Hallelujah. Oh God, today you go and look in your closet. You take this way, take it off, take this way, take it off, take this way, take it because you don't know what to wear. When it was five shirts, you just know, oh, I wore this uh, two Sundays ago, so let me not repeat myself. So let me. Ah. And now we call the proud happy. Because you are looking at other people and envious. Yea, they work wickedness. They that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. These are the complaints. Eh, see, this person Christ is not even serving God. Look how things are good for them. He just released a new car. He just uh, this thing. And you are just sitting there. Mournfully, mournfully. 16. Thank you, Jesus. Then they that fear the Lord speak often one to another 
And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that taught upon his name. Do you think about God? Do you think about his house? Are you concerned about his house? Are you burdened? Or you complain for the small serving? You are serving God. Hallelujah. There are different types of giving. You see, when we read 10, it said types and offerings. So you have types, you have offerings, and you have alms giving. A L M. Alms, giving of alms. Acts chapter number 10. We'll come back to this. Acts 10, verse 1 and 2. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Alms giving. Alms giving is when you give to the poor, when you give. And it's different from tithing. You can't get up and take your tithe and say, I'm giving my tithe to the poor. It's a different kind of giving. Hallelujah. Bible says, he who lends to the poor, lends to the Lord. And so we must have an eye for those who lack and give to them. But you cannot use that as an excuse. When you read the, the Gospels, there was a time when the Sadducees and Pharisees, they were not tithing and doing what they should. And then they'll be giving excuses. They don't take care of their parents. And then they'll, they'll be giving excuses. Oh, I tithe, so I don't take care. Oh, I... Excuses. The Bible says this man, he gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. I think let's read three. Verse number three. Thank you, Jesus. And he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And we know what the story is. When he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms uh, come up for a memorial before God. Beloved, when you give, you raise a memorial in the presence of God. Hallelujah. When Abraham gave tithes, the Bible says that he was giving tithes to the children in his loins. The book of Hebrews, we'll look at that uh, uh, next time. So that when you give in the kingdom of God, it's not even just you. It connects to your family. It connects to your children. So don't let the devil fool you. Praise God. Do it voluntarily. Do it willingly. God loves a cheerful giver. Be cheerful in your giving. Don't be mournful. Memory, you will not get the benefit. That's why your heart condition is important. Hallelujah. Your heart plays an important part in this whole thing. Amen. If your heart is not right, don't bother to give because it will not benefit you. Hallelujah. It will be like giving into a pocket full of holes. Praise God. Let me conclude with Genesis 8, 22. Genesis 8, 22. This is the law of giving. Genesis 8, 22. Genesis 8, 22. This is God's covenant. While the earth remaineth, seed, time, and harvest. See, seed, 
time harvest. When you plant your seed, you must give it time to get the harvest. You don't plant today and eat, eat tomorrow. It's a process. Seed, time, and harvest. So if you don't sow seed, you won't get harvest. Hallelujah. You are expecting breakthrough when you haven't done what it takes to get the breakthrough. And you are lying before God. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Hallelujah. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. This is God's covenant. After Noah lifted a sacrifice before God, and the smell of the sacrifice went into the nostrils of God, and God made a declaration, as long as this earth remains, Seed time, harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Hallelujah. Beloved, take your giving seriously. It is a, 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 an open door to many things. Like I said, it may not necessarily come in money, but it comes in diverse ways of favor and Open doors and breakthroughs that you, 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 you don't sweat for. Unimaginable ways. Hallelujah. And it must be done from a heart of love. If you are not loving God, then don't bother. Hallelujah. Because it won't do you well. Praise God. Last scripture. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7. I'll have to continue the message. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart. Don't let anybody manipulate you. I have been in meetings where by the time they finish talking, you cry out of guilt, you just, you know, just for them to shut up. When you see me in those meetings, then my head is down like this because something is just going on inside me. Hallelujah. I remember there was a meeting I attended in a very big church. And this great man of God, global man of God, had been invited to the program. And he came and he said, the spirit of God has just spoken to me that everybody should give 99.9. And I said, God, is everybody sitting here able to give 99.9? And as soon as he said that, there were ushers in the wing with envelopes. So it didn't just descend. It was planned. And those things used to offend me. And so I didn't even want to study the subject of money. But it's so necessary in the kingdom of God. The Bible says the power to get wealth comes from God. That he may establish his covenant he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. Hallelujah. God owns the cattle on a thousand. He owns the silver and the gold. Please don't go. Okay, let me read that. He says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. I wish you would read the whole of eight when you go home. He says, after he's brought you into the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, giving you houses you didn't build, giving you what not, don't forget God. Because it's so easy to forget God. Your heart size has become big. You are sleeping in air conditioning. Nyafu, nyafu, nyafu. You won't get up and pray. Oh, it's Sunday. Go to check. Oh, And you are shining your car. And thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. 
for it. It is he that gives the power, ability, creativity to get wealth that he may establish. This is his goal that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. God has a purpose. God has a mission. Let's quickly read, finish the 2 Corinthians 9, 7 and I close. Every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give. This is the new covenant. Amen. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity, because God is not Father Christmas or a loto, uh, this thing. If I do this, then God will do this. If I do, God is not a loto, a gambler. Hallelujah. Nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. That you are, you look and see what the Lord has done. And then you say to yourself, I want to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Please bow down your heads. Talk to God. Talk to God. There is always an ouch. Because you know you haven't done right. David said in Psalm 19, Forgive our secret faults, that which nobody else knows but you. Where, where is my offering? For the tithe is holy. Is holy. But you see, this God is so merciful. Because at a time when David and his men were desperate and there was no food to eat. They went to the temple and they asked the priest. And he gave them the shoe bread, the bread that was only to be eaten by the priests. And God did not strike them dead. That is our God. That is our God.